Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Thursday, the 9th of April, and it is 11-12. Um, we're going to start off with a sound saying. It's coming from Deuteronomy 31-6. It says, The Lord thy God, He it is that does go with thee, he will not fail thee nor forsake thee. He goes with thee. He will not fail us nor will he forsake us no matter what's going on in our world. I will read it again. The Lord thy God, he it is that does go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. The back is coming from John 11, verse 25, and it says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall live. Okay, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And that one is speaking of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me put this back. I had some information to share with you, but before we do that, I'd rather just go into the reading. We're reading from the old book, Old Testament, um, Isaiah 45, and I believe this is our first reading in Isaiah, I believe. We were supposed to read Isaiah 14 some while ago. But we're going to stick with Isaiah 45. That's where our Lord wants us today. Just looking for something else really quick. And I can't find. Isaiah 14. So we haven't read from Isaiah. Okay. No routine, guys. Okay. Let me give you a quick into the introduction into the book of Isaiah, and then we'll go straight into the reading. And whatever else I have for you, I can give it to you on another day. <clears throat> okay, the author is Isaiah. Uh, dates written between 745 and 680 B.C. Time span, um, 60 years, it says here. Although Isaiah prophecies covers all earthly time, including this time now that we're in. His ministry lasted 60 years during a range of four kings of Judah, uh, Uzziah, Joham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. The title of this book is named after its author, the prophet Isaiah. Now, uh, a lot of what Isaiah prophesied during the Old Testament is coming to pass in our days. So these prophecies, uh, like it says, covers all earthly times. Um, now, Isaiah, the well-educated, politically astute Isaiah, lived in Jerusalem, uh, the capital of Judah at the time, which is the way it's supposed to be. Isaiah has messages for all of Israel, but his ministry is primarily directed to Judah. Hosea and Machai are prophesying God's word at this same time. Tradition has it that Isaiah is sewn into pieces during the reign of evil Manassas, which was the most evil king during the biblical times. Um, in our times, I believe the most evil leader during our time was um, Hitler, okay, because of all the death that came about during his reign of the Jewish people. 
Tradition has it, I'm um, sorry, I'll read it again anyway. Tradition has it that he is thrown into pieces during a rage of evil um, Manassas. The book of Isaiah begins the prophetic section of the Old Testament. Uh, we have written probably Jerusalem, to whom primarily to the nation of Judah, but also to all the surrounding nations and for us who take the time to read the book of Isaiah. Contents, while Judah was spiritually destitute, as America and the world is spiritually destitute, not just America, it's all over. This, this is why um, this pandemic is all over. Okay? So the world is spiritually destitute. All right? Isaiah is even more, Israel is even more corrupt. After Isaiah prophesied the destruction of Israel by his Azarians, which indeed takes place shortly thereafter, he turns his attention to Judah. His message to Judah and the surrounding nations is that the judgment of God will come upon them also. If the judgment of, of God came upon the people in the biblical time, we are not exempt. Do you hear me? We are not exempt from the judgment of God. Okay? If they do not turn from their evil ways, the Babylonian let the Babylonian will lead Judah into captivity. All is not gloom as it is now. All is not gloom. Okay? However, as Israel assures the people, those in captivity will be allowed to return to Jerusalem under Cyrus Edic. A suffering servant will be born at, as the virgin child of God to be the Messiah and bring salvation to the world. So this is before the birth of our Lord. And he is prophesizing the birth of our Lord. Okay? And he prophesies it to the letter because he was born from a virgin. Okay? And the restoration of Jerusalem will take place and bring abundant blessing to the new Zion. Isaiah's prophecies concerning Jesus Christ are crystal clear. Crystal clear. Okay? Thorough. And probably more detailed than in any other Old Testament book. Now we're going to the key words of the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> Judgment. Salvation. Judgment comes to all of us, to every generation, whether it's in a biblical time or in our time. God's judgment does not escape us, okay? Um, we may be able to fight among each other and, and pretty much win or lose, but when we begin to fight with God, we, there's, there's a losing battle here, losing battle. Um, our enemies cannot... Um, put us in quarantine. Our enemies cannot shut our cities down. Okay? Our enemies cannot do this to us. But our divine God can shut us down. He can flood our subways. He can do as he pleases. And he is very unhappy with all of the world. This is why this pandemic is all over. It's not just in America. It's everywhere. Okay? He is not happy. In the same way, during the time of Noah, he was not happy. Okay? And he's a patient God. A patient God. He gives us more than enough time to get our act together because like a good parent, he does not wish to, to punish us. Huh? He rather we come to our senses on our own. But if, if if he must, he would do so as he is doing now. Okay? So judgment and salvation is what 66 chapters can be likened to a miniature Bible. Okay? The first 39 chapters correspond to the 39 chapters of the Old Testament by emphasizing God's judgment upon those who refuse to repent and turn to him in faith. This is why judgment comes upon the land.
And you know, God may have promised not to use water, but he has so many other elements that he can use to punish us, including this invisible virus, locusts, earthquakes, drought. Those are all means of disciplining us. And it's been a while since America has seen famine, but it's coming because I don't think this pandemic will be enough to get the people to repent. It will not be enough. This is a stiff-necked generation of people. Stiff-necked. They are worse than the people that came out of Egypt. We are worse than they are. A hundred times worse. So, you know, our judgment is going to be harsh. And if you think this pandemic is harsh, the next one will be even more harsh. Did you hear me? It will be worse. The final 27 chapters parallel the 27 books of the New Testament by focusing on the Messiah who is our salvation. Okay. Team, theme, PowerPoints in the book. The first PowerPoint is God is our eternal comforter. He is the Redeemer and Savior and the Creator of all that we see. That we did not do with our own hands. He created it. Including yourselves. He created you. Okay? Second one. God will pardon us of our sins if we will forsake our past and turn to Him. If we will. But see, we have just gone so far away from him. We've done so many sins beyond those of our ancestors. That you have a nation that almost refuse to repent, refuse to acknowledge God as the ultimate God. I was watching the news all day yesterday. Everybody's giving honor to this person, that organization this individual, every now and then you will hear someone say God. The governor of New York even had the nerve to say he never thought in his lifetime he would see something like that. Oh, really? What do you think about the things God sees that we're doing? That does not surprise you? But uh, when judgment comes, oh, that's a surprise. You are not to be surprised. Because this is a long-awaited judgment. Long-awaited. We've been up to our foolishness for 232 years. Period. Okay, God will pardon our sins if we will forsake our past, forsake our past and turn to him. Next, the fleeting pleasures of sin in our lives will never be worth the extreme price we must pay for it. Never. The judgment of God. That is the extreme price that we as a people pay for our sins. I remind you that God deals with us individually and he deals with us as a nation. God is holy and will not tarry while unholiness persists in his covenant people. He will not tarry. And even still, he is merciful. How do you see the mercy of God? You see it when you see our health care providers our truckers, and anybody else that has been working during this pandemic. You see it when they can come home and they have not been affected. That is the mercy of God. It is not simply their gear that has protected them. It is His mercy upon them. Period. Period. 
And just because you become a victim of Corona-19 does not mean that you will perish from it. Still he show us mercy because those numbers of deaths could be a lot greater. They have already superseded the depths of the Twin Tower. Already. Tripled. Okay, and don't forget that the Twin Towers was fighting among each other. One nation fighting against another nation. Of course, the catastrophes were much. But never were the catastrophes were more when God is involved. It will always be greater. When it's divine judgment, it will always, the casualties will always be greater, my brothers and sisters. God is holy and will not tarry while unholiness persists in his covenant people. Next, deliverance is of God. This thing is of God. He causes things to happen. We are not to, we are not to be able to understand all things. It is not of man to understand all things. Even with the help of science. But you should understand the holiness of God. You should understand the judgment of God. You should understand that. Okay? The deliverance of God is real. Ask all those who have been cured from the coronavirus. Who they give their thanks to. Okay? Not of man. The deliverance is of God, not of man. That's what it says here. It is of God, not of man. All right? The greatest success in the world is being obedient to the will of God. The greatest success. All right? So now let's go to the reading 45. Let me see if I can bring this thing up to show you. Sometimes when I find things, I like to preserve it. Should be in the notes. No. Oh, should be in the notes. If I can find it in the notes. I can't find it. I'll read it to you later. Notes. It's not here. Oh God, I know I sent it to notes. Not here. I have to find it under my other book. But I will read this particular uh, proclamation that was um, written by a particular president. And you could tell just by reading this proclamation that this man believed in God, the Almighty. Why don't I have it in my possession? But I will surely read it to you tomorrow. I will transfer it to this here phone. So I can read it to you. And I bet you will not be able to guess which president this was who wrote this proclamation. Okay? And he was proclaiming a fasting and prayer for all. It was a day of fasting and prayer. No one could eat. No one could drink anything for the whole day. Okay? This was back in 1870. 1863 when this proclamation was wrote and it was done.
okay? Very good precedent. All right, let's start with uh, 45 of Isaiah. God calls Cyrus to subdue nations. And this is a 25-verse uh, letter, and it has a little bit of everything, and it has blue for salvation, gold for prophecy, purple for the trinity, black for sin, um, silver for history, brown for Satan, red for discipleship. It has the whole 26 verses of this letter is in uppercase lettering, okay? The, the entire 24, 25 verses. Okay, so the Lord is, is talking to Cyrus, and he is saying this. Thus said the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2, I will go before thee, and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sumber the bars of iron. Three, and I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Can he always tell you who he is? Okay? And he always tell you all his powers and all his abilities and all that he is able to do and all that he has already done. Okay? For, for Jacob my servant say, and Israel my elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee. That means he has changed thy name. Though thou hast not known me. Okay, so let's take it from one to four because that was blue for salvation. It says, this is what the Lord said to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I took hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor to open doors before him so that gates will not be shut to. I will go before you and will level the mountains I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Verse 3, I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summoned you by name. For, for, the, for the sake of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow you a title of honor, though you did not acknowledge me. Okay. Let's move on to five. Five to eight is purple for the Trinity. The Lord is speaking again. Uh, God is speaking again about himself. Okay. I am the Lord and there is none else. There is no God besides me. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. Six, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is none else, no other God. It doesn't matter who you worship. There's only one. And he has a son named Jesus Christ. If you're not worshiping God the Father, you are worshiping a fake God. Okay, because there's only one that can take credit for the creation of this earth. One. Okay, six, I will repeat. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is none else. Seven, I formed the light and created darkness. I made peace and created evil. Okay? So peace is not something that we can give ourselves. No. Peace is something that only God can grant us. 
Evil is something that we can do ourselves. We do it very well. But he can also have more evil come upon us as it is today. This is an evil thing that we are going through. I form the light and create a darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Hey, drop down, ye heavens from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let the righteous spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Okay, let's read it from here. Five to eight. I am the Lord. There is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you, though you have not acknowledged me. Six. So that from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Seven. I form the light and create a darkness. I bring prosperity and create disasters. Okay? I, the Lord, do all these things. Eight. You heavens above, rain down righteousness. Let the clouds shower it down. Let the earth open wide. Let salvation spring up. Let righteousness grow with it. I, the Lord, have created it. Okay, nine and ten is black for sin. Woe unto him that strives with his maker. Yes, we strive with our maker. When we no longer uh, acknowledge the most important rules that we have been given long ago by the hand of Moses, when we no longer acknowledge the Ten Commandments, we are striving with our maker. We don't want them in our schools. We don't want them in our courthouse. We, we don't want judges that know the laws of God. This is why these judges now do not do that which is justice. You know what they do? They support the priest that is a pedophile. They don't want to hear real cases. They have real causes. They will support that which is evil. Woe unto him that strives with his maker. Let the potherds stir, strive with the potherds of the earth. Shall the clay say to him that fashioned it, What makest thou or thy work? He has no hands. Mm. 10. Woe unto him that saith unto his father, What begottest thou or to the woman? What hast thou brought forth? All right, 9 and 10 from here. Woe to him who quarrels with his maker, to him who is but a pothead among the potherds on the ground. Woe to him who quarrels with his maker, to him who is but a potherd among the potherd on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say he has no hands? 10. Woe to him who says to his father, what have you begotten? Or to his mother, what have you brought to birth? All right. 11 and 12, back to purple for the Trinity. Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his Maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my son and concerning the works of my hand. Command ye me. The Lord always tells you to ask him and test him. You can always test God. And whatever it is that you requested, he will fulfill it. He's telling you, ask me. Ask me of things to come concerning my son and concerning the works of my hands. Command ye me. Twelve. I have made the earth and created man upon it. All right. I even, my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their hosts have I commanded. That means everything. Every planet he created. 
It's not like man said a big bang and blah, 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 blah. No, that's not how the earth was created. That's your own evil imaginations. All right, let's read it from here. 11 and 12. This is what the Lord said, the Holy One of Israel and its maker, concerning things to come. Do you question me about my children or give me orders about the works of my hand? 12. It is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. I marshaled their sturdy host. Okay. All right, I have a problem, Father. This says, 11, Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, Ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the works of my hand. Here it says, This is what the Lord said, the Holy One of Israel, and his maker, concerning things to come. This, I can have a problem with this book sometime. All right, moving on to 12. And 14, which is go for prophecy. I have raised him up in righteousness, and I will direct all his ways. He shall build my, my cities, and he shall let go my captives. Not for price nor reward, said the Lord of hosts. 14, thus said the Lord, the labor of Egypt and the merchandise of Ethiopia and of the Sibians, men of stature, shall come over unto thee, and they shall be thine. They shall come after thee. In chains they shall come over, and they shall fall down unto thee. They shall make supplications unto thee, saying, Surely God is in thee, and there is none else. There is no God. All right, let's read it from here. 13 and 14. I will rise up, Cyrus, in my righteousness. I will make all his ways straight. He will rebuild my cities and set my exiles free, but not for a price or reward, said the Lord Almighty. This is what the Lord said. The price, the products of Egypt and the merchandise of Cush and those tall Sibians, they will come over to you and will be yours. They will trading be, behind you, coming over to you in chains. They will bow down before you and plead with you, saying, Surely God is with you, and there is no other. There is no other God. There is no other, brothers and sisters, but one. Okay? Continuing on to 15, which is a one verse of purple. It says, Worldly thou art a God that hidest thyself, O God of Israel, the Savior. 15 from here, Truly you are a God who hides himself, O God and Savior of Israel. 16 is brown for Satan. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, all of them. They should go to confusion together that are makers of idols. And this is exactly where we are. We are in a state of confusion. Okay, 16. All And, and still, still you have some praying to statues. Images that have eyes and ears and nose, but can't see, can't breathe, and can't smell. 16. All the makers of idols will be put to shame and disgrace. They will go off into disgrace together. All right. 17 is silver for history. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed nor confounded. World without end. 17 here. But Israel will be saved by the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You will never be put to shame or disgraced to ages everlasting. All right, 18 and 19, back to purple for the Trinity. But that's say, ooh, a little bit of lowercase lettering. But that said, the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he has established it, he created it, not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is no, there is none else. 19, I have not spoken in secret. 
in a dark place of the earth. I say not into the seed of Jacob. Seek ye me in vain. I and I, the Lord, speak righteously. I declare things that are right. For he is not an evil God. You understand? Our God is a good God. He is not an evil God that he should do that which is evil. But chastising his children is part of being a good God. All right? 18 and 19. For well, this is what the Lord said. He who created the heavens, he is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, he founded it. He did not create it to be empty but formed it to be inhabited. Okay? So we are to not take that which he has created for our inhabitants and pollute it with our crazy immoral laws. Okay? I am the Lord, and there is no other. 19. I have not spoken in secret from somewhere in the land of darkness, I have not said to Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. I, the Lord, spoke the truth. I declare what is right. Because he is a righteous God. Indeed. 20. Black for sin. Ooh, and we have one split verse. 21. 20. It tells us what to do when trouble comes our way. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw nigh together. Ye that are escaped of the nation. They have now knowledge that set up the woods of their graven images and play unto a God that does not save. Okay, 20, I'm going to read the brown part. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. The blue salvation part of, of 21 says, who has declared this from ancient time? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else besides me, a just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. He says it throughout this whole chapter. Okay? Like 20 and 21. Gather together and come assembly, you fugitives from the nations. Ignorance of those who carry about idols of wood, who pray to gods that cannot save. 21. Declare what is to be presented. Let them take counsel together. Who foretold this long ago? Who declared it from the distant past? Was it not I the Lord? And there is no God apart from me. A righteous God and a Savior. There is none but me. None. And that is the truth we read this morning. Okay. 22. It's purple for the Trinity. Look unto me and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. 22. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. 23. 24 is read for discipleship. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. Did you hear that? Every knee. Upon that day when our Lord show up, every knee. It don't make, make no difference what you got in your system. You could be drunk as a skunk, but upon that day, you will know to bow. You could have just hit that crack pipe, but upon that day, you will bow. Every knee. You could have worshipped a different God all your life, but upon that day, you will bow. The devil will bow. Okay? Let me repeat this. I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear. 24. Surely shall one say, in the Lord have I righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are increased against him shall be ashamed. Let's read it from here. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked. Before me every knee will bow, by me every tongue will swear. 
23. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are righteousness and strength. All who have raised against him will come to him and be put to shame. 25 is blue for salvation. In the Lord shall all the seed of Israel be justified and shall glory. Amen. But in the Lord all the descendants of Israel will be founded, righteousness, and will exalt. That is all 25 verses of Isaiah 45. Um, no, I'll say that for tomorrow. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us here at Spiritual Warden. My name is Brenda Guerrero, and as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you, and may the will of God come from you. Please remember that during these times of isolation, please remember to say a prayer to all those that are out there working hard, from the health care provider to the truckers that are bringing in equipment to the leaders of the country that are trying their best to do the job that they have been uh, voted in for. Please try to be mindful. If you can't say anything good about your leader, don't say anything at all. We have enough, uh, enough going on in our world that we are being punished for. Please remember to pray without ceasing. No, don't just pray for your own children. Pray for all those out there that are doing a fabulous job. They are, they are all behaving just like the troops that they are. And God is with them. God has shined his light upon them. And this is why they are still showing up to work every day. Dedicated workers. Dedicated truckers. Dedicated uh, scientists. Everybody is trying to do their best to to help in this time of great distress. But most of all, pray to your God. Ask for forgiveness. Repent for your sins because that's what he truly wants. In the meantime, stay safe. Wash your hands often. And if you don't have to go out, don't go out. Thank you and have a beautiful day.